The face-off in Phoenix is just a few minutes away, and Paul Bissonnette is getting his game face on. All right, well, I guess follow me. I'm a small-town Canadian boy who grew up playing hockey. I uh, was fortunate enough to transition my game from defense to forward and, and carve out a five-year NHL career where I spent a lot of time mostly fighting and, and sitting on the bench and most of the time actually in the press box. What's up? I get a little, uh, little bit of social anxiety with a, with a camera following me around. Oh, somebody, oh, we're over here. I don't even know where I'm supposed to be sitting. This is our little team up here. The press box is where he's headed tonight. The hometown radio broadcast for the Arizona Coyotes. Rarely do I miss playing. I miss the atmosphere in the locker room, but now I got the podcast. That's the only thing I really miss. I never even got to play when I was playing. I was, I was up here during games. Richie's first game back is fourth of the season. Oh, here we go. Brandon Bowling and Paul Bissonnette. And when he did get on the ice, he was often doing this. If you search for videos of Bissonnette playing hockey, it's fights, not goals, that you'll find. It's how he got his nickname, Biz Nasty. And while his career might have been unremarkable, his self-made multimedia success since then, including a Twitter following of more than a million people, isn't just unusual in hockey, it may be unique. Bissonnette's willing to use his charm, his humor, and, well, anything else to build his post-hockey career. In that last off-season, I got uh, left knee surgery, ACL and MCL. And before I even really healed up, I started that film project called Biz Does BC. Now, it wasn't anything earth-shattering. It was very silly where I implemented other NHLers and had them acting in this silly script that they knew nothing about, and it kind of all came together. Just one more thing, though, before I run. Can you please stop wearing that Speedo, man? It's disgusting. No one wants to see that. But it taught me how to get comfortable in front of the camera. And even just throughout that and process of filming that, my acting, I mean, I'm a, a Z-list actor here, you know, right, content, I got better. And there, there's not a lot of guys who transitioned out of hockey to kind of do their own thing and their own silly videos. Not another one. Shut up, Connor. And implement their own humor where I was so nervous and anxious that I was like, I need to, I just need to move. I need to do all these different things, figure out what I'm good at, and it's, it's led into what is happening right now. Coyotes have a lot of control of their own fate. They still got three more games against Vancouver. Along with radio, he does some local television for the Coyotes, but he says this isn't the best fit for him. I soon found out that it is so hard to be a polished broadcaster where I'm delivering everything and because how I talk is I swear and, and you, you listen to it on the podcast, right? So I'm able to, to now do what I love on the podcast because I don't need that extra second filter. Hello, everybody. Let's say hi to the boys. Biz Nasty, Paul Bissonette, the celebrity, the f***ing John Lennon of the crew. What's going oh, on? Oh, get the f*** out of here. The podcast is called Spit and Chicklets, right. hockey slang for losing your teeth in a game. Twice a week, Bissonette and his two co-hosts talk hockey and, well, pretty well anything else. Mary Lemieux's clean up. My like, dog. Mario the new is wiping up my dog. We're not extremely polished. Uh, we're fairly opinionated. Uh, we're a little vulgar. We talk about some stuff that maybe bit. some people wouldn't be down with. But uh, all in all, we're just having a good time. Not extremely polished, but extraordinarily popular. It's regularly one of the top five podcasts in Canada. And even in the huge U.S. market, it's in the top 150. He just got his 18th the other night, leading the team. Still the fucking best bargain off of an entry-level contract in the entire league. Chicklets has become famous in hockey circles for its interviews, from current stars to former minor leaguers. And you won't hear any cliches, no taking it one game at a time. Any steroid use? <laughs> oh, I have no problem talking about my steroid use. All right, let's go. I as you can see in this video, players are relaxed and they're candid, like Connor McDavid talking about when some people in Edmonton harassed him and his parents. We see them in the restaurant, they're following us, and they're saying a bunch of stuff. I'm walking by my, beside my dad, I look over, he's fuming. Goes to turn around, I'm like, no, 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 like, let's get out of here. I'm like, he doesn't realize that all, they all have their phones out, you know? Yeah. Everyone's got their phone out these days, right? We try to let people inside the locker room and, and maybe the mental state that some of these players are in when making decisions on and off the ice. Um, you know, we're very sympathetic to them. I think that they appreciate that. I think that's why they come on and feel comfortable, maybe 
elaborating on stories from behind the scenes or even situations that happen out on the ice. Um, I would say our main objective is to grow the game and show people these guys' personalities. They're just like you and I, you know? It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Like you and I, except they're living the dream, so, you know, unlike except a lot of people. Except they're making 10 million a year, <laughs> getting to put a, a rubber puck in a net. But the podcast popularity may come with a price. When retired player Brent Sopel said on Chicklets his coach Mark Crawford had kicked and choked him, it led to Crawford being suspended, something Sopel said he never intended. And just four days ago, Hall of Famer Jeremy Roenick was fired from NBC after he had joked on the podcast about sex with a co-worker. When Bissonette sits down in his Phoenix apartment to record the podcast, he may feel like he's back in the locker room, but realizes what he says here could make headlines. I personally don't like the added pressure of maybe now some people hanging on our every word. I, you know, as a, I'm just some clown who has an opinion, and, and I think that the fighting aspect of it, the, the, the coaching issue at the start of the season, there are some intense subjects that we do have to chime in on. And, uh, you know, I guess it's hard maybe seeing some of the replies of the people that disagree with you. But uh, all in all, as I mentioned before, we just we kind of want to fly under the radar and just do our thing. As for Bissonette, doing his thing means constantly building his brand. He secured deals with American Express and McDonald's. The professional lacrosse team in Vancouver, the Warriors, brought him in to boost their profile making a biz nasty video. How's it going? Matt, Captain of the Warriors. Look at me. I'm the captain now. And setting up a post-game meet and greet where fans gave him a rock star reception. Put the number ones up. You guys are first. Put the number ones up. But while Bissonette looks so comfortable with crowds, he says he struggles with anxiety and the lingering effects of head trauma from all those fights. And so, before taping the podcast, a little cannabis self-medication to settle his nerves and get into the zone. The unfiltered, unpredictable biz nasty that's made the podcast so popular. Listen, guys, I wear a certain style, and it's my style. If you ain't down with it, I don't really give a f***. Because mostly the guys chirping me on there are still the ones wearing those f***ing affliction jeans with the white lace in it. And he braces himself for a little blowback on social media. I have an aggressive sense of humor. I'm not going to apologize for that. And there's still a large number of people, um, specifically in Canada, where a lot of my audience is, that enjoy that. And they don't want to be shamed for liking that type of humor. I don't don't think we're bad people. We just, you know, we, we flirt with that line a little bit. 